In this video, I'm going to go through with you my thought process for creating the piece of music that you just heard. Also, make sure that you stick around to the end for an important announcement on how you could win up to $500 worth of goodies. Unless you don't like fun or free things. If you want to learn more about music theory, songwriting technique, fretboard visualization and much more, then come and join me on Fretwise. Become a member today and you'll get access to all of my masterclasses as well as daily challenges, a members forum and personalized progress reviews. Click the link in the video description or go to getfretwise.com to learn more. Okay, so the inspiration for this music came from listening to a Hayley Williams album called Petals for Armor. It's a great album with some really cool ideas and then as I listened to the track Crystal Clear I could very easily hear this melody in my head. Now for the next part I knew I wanted to continue the double stop theme and so I began with this. Now I figured that it would be a missed opportunity if I didn't turn the second half of that into triads. So I changed this into this. And you know, it's funny, now that I sit down and analyze what I'm doing, what I just played actually outlines the underlying chord, which is E minor or E minor seven. As you can see with this hammer on, we're basically hammering on the chord tones and then of course a, a variation or a different voicing of the chord before coming back to the key chord tones. I want you to take note of that thought as I go through the rest of this with you. Next up I play this. Now I think this works really nicely because it's a series of descending double stops that outline the underlying chord progression. So this outlines D. You see we've got the fifth and then the root hammering on to the second degree for a tension tone before returning back to the root note. And then... So this of course outlines an A major dyad. We've got the root and the third. And then this here works really nicely. This is a six nine voicing. So we've got the root, the six, the nine, and then the major third. That chord of course offers a lot of, uh, or not a lot, but some tension that needs resolving to the next chord, which is G. Or in this instance, G sus two. I like to think that stylistic elements of my playing include double stops, triads, and sometimes ending a phrase with just a really pretty chord and letting that chord ring as I pull the guitar a little bit for some vibrato. Now so far I'd consider what I've taught you to be the intro to this solo. In my head I would imagine the lyrics finishing there on bar 4, hence the rhythmic approach so far so that it doesn't overpower the imaginary vocals. Moving on now, here's the next phrase. This phrase is actually one of the more tricky ones due to the articulation of the bends and the dynamics. Pay close attention to this again as I do it slowly. You see the right hand actually does a lot of muting in there so that we don't get 
noises like that. Now, I remember that this is where my imagination began to stall a little. I knew I wanted some more double stops and more melodic playing, so I fooled around a little bit, and this is what made most sense to my ears. This comes from the upper end of the B minor pentatonic scale. And as I slide up to the 12, that outlines the underlying chord E minor as we resolve back into the B minor position there. And then after that, I came up with this. This point of the solo reminds me of the G sus 2 that I played on bar five. It's another pretty chord that I just play and let sustain whilst I bend the neck. And that leads quite smoothly into the next phrase. So from Notice that my right hand follows the melody through to cut out some of the older notes. It just makes it sound a lot more controlled. Now that phrase is just a slightly different variation of what I played on bar six. Moving on. Once again, I revisit the same vocabulary of double stops that I played earlier. It's really the articulation of these notes that matter, not necessarily what I play. Now, as the song comes to an end, I felt like it needed something flashy and cool that would offer a little wow moment and a climax to the piece. So I pulled out the pick for a little bit more texture and then played these pentatonic notes. And then I thought I'd take some inspiration from an Andy Wood solo that I learned recently for this pentatonic finish. And there you have it. That just about sums up how I approached this solo. And now I would like you to create your own solo over this track. I'm hosting the Crystal Clear Fretwise Contest on my website, Fretwise, where you can win up to $500 worth of goodies from me, Positive Grid, and the team behind Guitar Pro 8. All you need to do to participate is sign up to Fretwise, download the backing track, play your own solo over the track, and then share it with the Fretwise community before June the 30th. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Also, if you want to download the tab for my solo, get access to all my masterclasses and support these free YouTube videos, Fretwise is the place for everything. So that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you in the next video.